Yeah. Yeah. So, hello everyone. I'm Supragiraj, um, developer at Marlin, and today I'll be discussing a case study of MEV on low fee chains uh, with focus on Polygon POS chain. So, uh, just a general outline of the presentation, what I'll be touching upon as topics in this format. Uh, first, uh, I think I'll be discussing on why we chose to analyze and help facilitate MEV extraction on Polygon POS chain and what was our motivation behind the choice. Um, also, next comes a few stats we have uh, regarding MEV on Polygon POS chain. Also, we will be discussing a few modifications that we did um, to MEV inspect pipe to help with our analysis of MEV on high throughput chain. Uh, for us, that's Polygon. Um, MEV bore, our modification of bore client for uh, Polygon akin to MEV get in Ethereum to facilitate MEV extraction will also be discussed. Um, then we will touch upon a few concerns that we have seen in uh, Polygon with respect to the adoption of MEV bore. Uh, we further also discuss um, the steps that we are undertaking to alleviate all these concerns. And finally, I'll wrap up with uh, how we think we'll be going forward uh, and the next steps. So the motivation of trying to solve the MEV problem analysis and facilitating the extraction of MEV on Polygon POS chain uh, was primarily uh, because there was a large DeFi ecosystem currently standing strong on Polygon. So Polygon POS has currently over 3000 dApps and around US dollar 5.5 billion logged in all of these endeavors. endeavors. So in fact, a lot of well-known DeFi platforms such as Aave, uh, QuickSwap, Balancer, draw their direct parallels from Ethereum counterparts. And Polygon POS is also EVM compatible. So bot writers and searchers would have easier time porting the systems onto Polygon if they have already invest, invested that time building on Ethereum. So how big is it? Uh, we know that out of all the MEV that's extractable, a fraction of it is actually extracted. And yet another subset of uh, that is identified by various methods of analyzing transactions. So Flashbots methods uh, implemented in MEV Inspect Pi and earlier the REST version of software also showed somewhere around 897 million US dollar worth of MEV extracted over a period of two years from January 2020 to till now. So running a similar, albeit modified version of the same system on Polygon yielded us somewhere around 37 million US dollar worth of MEV uh, since January 2021 uh, till October 2021. And that only includes uh, Uniswap V2 based swap based arbitrages. So also TVL on Polygon primarily grew uh, in May 2021, as Alex showed. So the 37 million is far underestimation of MEV that's been there and extracted on Polygon. So here's an example of what blocks and things look like on um, on Polygon scan. Here we can see an example of these transactions on Polygon POS, all of which technically spam the chain in order to extract MEV, at least as of now. Since Polygon gas fee is quite low, successful extraction more than compensate for any reverted transactions or any unsuccessful MEV extraction attempts. So prima facie, it's evident that spamming happens on Polygon in race to extract MEV. So we can ask ourselves, how big is this problem really? Um, and how big is this problem really for platform as a whole? So we did some analysis to find numbers pertaining to this. For a lower bound, we tried to classify the transactions into whether they have interacted with contracts, which we know for certain have at least one successful uh, chance of extracting the MEV using arbitrages over a span of 100,000 blocks. And that's a lower bound. And that is around 40% of the transactions that we see in, in this 100,000 block span. On the upper end, upper end uh, we try to isolate accounts that have shown successful or unsuccessful transactions in at least three consecutive blocks, it means that they are spammers. And these uh, totaled up to um, somewhere around 57%. So hence, we can see these numbers, 40 to 57%. That's a huge spamming problem on Polygon POS chain resulting just from MEV extraction attempts. So a few uh, statistics that we want to share with you uh, regarding MEV on Polygon. Uh, 
on average we see at least 120000 us dollar worth of mev extracted every day one of these images have been already shown to you uh, from jan 2021 to october 2020 uh, october 2021 we see a cumulative extraction of over 37 million us dollars and that's just for uniswap v2 contract swap based arbitrage it does not include even the sophisticated methods like um, flash loans sandwiches flash swaps or use of other defi uh, products like balancer so all of this uh, data is extracted from our even based arbitrage detection system which is a modification on top of mev inspect pi so let's have a closer look on how we modified the mev analysis system to get these stats on polygon so mev inspect pi is a tool written by the flash team thank you thanks to them um, it helps us uh, analyze the uh, extent of mev post hoc using a blockchain node so it's much more involved than the block diagram i'm showing here but and it can do much more than swaps and arbitrages liquidation etc etc but for the purposes of this discussion we will limit ourselves to the high level design of the inspector shown here at the core inspect uses aragon or parity based ethereum archive mode and it calls its tracing rpcs among other calls to retrieve the block traces and transaction receipts to inject and then further classify using trace classifier and then classify the steps of the transactions into swaps liquidation transfers etc etc and swaps are then used to find cycles between tokens and if positive amounts are seen after a cycle of swaps uh, then it's called out as an arbitrage so flashwords team have incorporated a few more changes to make this system even faster for example they have implemented a new rpc method on ethereum nodes to allow them to batch multiple block tracing requests into a single call resulting in a lower http overhead of request and response times and also every time the tracing is done they cache it into databases so that later on they do not have to do the tracing again uh when we wanted to use this system on polygon pos chain we hit with a few problems uh polygon doesn't have a parity or aragon implementation for it its bore is go ethereum based um, and the tracing of get is not compat compatible with parity traces on a side note a lot of evm compatible chains are quite similar um they only give one implementation of um such as geth or parity for um, themselves like optimism gives only geth and we do not have choices uh, whether we 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 should take up parity or geth Uh, second polygon has a lot more transactions to analyze um, caching may just not be feasible as dbs tend to grow a lot bigger so optimizations aside the first course of action for us was to make mev inspect pi works somehow for polygon pos and the basic need was to uh, translate these get traces to parity traces so by using uh, get call tracer we were able to write a translation layer for mev inspect pi and that actually translated the get traces to parity traces and once this was possible the rest of the system need not change much so um this translation layer basically based on mev inspect pi worked on polygon for us it was able to detect arbitrages etc liquidations etc however we faced a few practical problems while backfilling our data so we ran an experiment for ourselves um, the archive node was running on bare metal amd system and it was powered by 5950x cpu which is 16 core 32 thread machine and even on this system when the tracing was invoked uh, all the hardware threads were fully pegged 100% and we can still only manage around 1.5 seconds worth of tracing per block uh, when the polygon pos still itself has the block time of around 2 seconds so this resulted in a real issue for us if we wanted to get any kind of historical data from polygon for example if we wanted to get around even 6 months worth of data we had to wait 4 months just to extract it and if we wanted to add, add any another uh, inspection algorithm uh since traces can't be stored in db because db is themselves grow too huge we have to wait another 4 months for 6 months worth of data so we cannot really catch up to the head of the blockchain in that in that case however uh while the translation mechanism posed a practical problem uh for polygon pos chain 
in theory the system worked well so we saw a group of students at columbia university tried our um, get translation layer on optimism and since optimism is a relatively new system with little over 1 million transactions in the starting month the team was able to detect mev extraction in excess of 40000 us dollar in just one month that's november to december uh, in 2021 for uniswap v3 like contract swaps alone uh, the nice thing about it is that all of these uh, mev extraction um, arbitrages uh required the router for v3 unisub pc uh this is also a good example of uh, to illustrate that the mev exists um and is there on other systems as well so in order to solve the practical issues of using the translation layer on polygon chain we started to look for other ways to reduce the computation load one way of doing this was to perhaps use events as bloom filter so such that only the transactions emitting a certain set of white listed events such as swap event sync event transfer event are traced otherwise they are skipped we implemented this by modifying the code for bore however the results were still not very promising we got a speed up of around 30% going from 1.5 second per block to around 1.1 second per block in batch tracing mode however this was still not good enough for uh, backfill so eventually uh, then we thought what if we restricted the kind of swaps that we can detect as a starter and we forget about other kind of results like liquidations for the time being um can we then use events themselves which we we were using for bloom filter uh, as the data source for swaps and then detect arbitrages from them so if we concerned ourselves with only uniswap v2 at least we can do so by using the events it, it turned out plus a few eth calls were required then this is also results uh, in us not needing a large uh, archive node anymore so we replaced the tracing component of mev in specpy and implemented direct conversion of events to swaps um the results were quite dramatic uh, not only did the size of polygon node reduce uh, we were also able to backfill the data for entire 2021 uh, jan to october in just around 36 hours uh, this is where our statistics stem from however as enunciated before this system has limitations the biggest one being if there are more complex mev extraction techniques the component data of which may not be derived derivable from the event data the system does not really work well we are still working on it um let's move on to the next part of our presentation on how marlin attempts to facilitate uh, extraction of mev in fashion similar to how flashbot fits in ethereum ecosystem uh, we modified bore the evm compatible get based component of uh, polygon pos node setup akin to mev gets we added support for bundles and brought forward the following features uh, mev bore permutes the mempool transactions and bundles it receives from the relay for max profitability of validators such as can pay validators directly through uh, the payments to coinbase addresses and our uh, marlin private relay helps reduce uh, spam in bundles arriving at validator nodes by simulating it first and then transmitting it ahead along with this there is a nice thing about polygon pos chain that we were able to implement so since we know that the uh, polygon pos chain has a system of sprints that allows us to know the validators responsible uh, for signing the blocks uh, beforehand we can limit the recipients or recipient validators for bundles we receive on a relay at any given point in time so this increases the security of bundles and uh, this is an additional feature we have implemented and is part of mvv bore right now so with this i would like to discuss a few practical differences between mev get for ethereum and mev bore for polygon and how that shapes our trajectory uh, trajectory going forward so ethereum has been around for a longer time than polygon the miners on ethereum uh, generally use a bit more sophisticated setups for mining uh, with this for practical purposes a miner can run flashbots mev get in more of a supplemental format while uh, mining blocks and thus reduce his or her dependence on mev get so in this slide we can see one such setup conceptualized uh, the miner runs two versions of get uh, vanilla get and mev get and the candidate blocks generated by both these nodes are compared by a system before dispatching it for mining to the mining grid 
uh, while this may look involved, it is interesting to note that even if MEV Geet fails in this format for any reason, the minor system is not compromised and uh, he or she does not lose the hash power and the hash power isn't sitting idle. So the situation changes uh, when we talk about POS chains like Polygon because there's no longer a separation of candidate block versus block that's mined eventually. So a single node is responsible for signing the blocks. Hence the previous format of supplementing instances uh, does not translate well into Polygon POS and hence MEV Bore needs to offer a lot more guarantees. So we came across a few frequent concerns from validators who were interested in our system. Uh, first of all, they were afraid of losing rewards. Uh, remember in Ethereum uh, supplemental setup, there was no case where the hash power goes to waste. Uh, however, in since MEV bore can only be a single instance, it, if it fails, there's no signing and validators were afraid of losing rewards and eventually even their reputation in the network. Um, also, they wanted attestation from Polygon uh, Foundation. The proposition of replacing bore with MEV bore is what leads to many asking for this. The troubling part here is, however, that every future version of MEV bore can't be, can't be guaranteed a foundation attestation, even if current uh, version is attested and whether the MEV bore um, double signs while we made sure that the MEV bore only adds in a contained way of on how bore already works we understand why this concern arises and lastly unlike ethereum the private key of uh, validator sits on the same system as bore and is accessed by bore so the participants hence also want some surety of not having bugs that will leak such sensitive information. So we worked on a few uh, mitigation things. This leads us to think about a few mitigation steps to alleviate the concerns of the validators. First of all, we are running the Loki testnet for Polygon that is incentivized to pawn our own token. So enterprising validators can try MEV board without risk of losing Matic or block rewards. And we also want to touch upon an important design decision that we made sure to respect that we didn't change Heimdall code that is responsible for staking rewards. Only the bore layer is changed with MEV bore. Um, going forward uh, with all these um, already done, we believe this is how we should be moving forward. We should continue uh, improving our folk of MEV inspect pi and unravel more MEV as we go forward. We are also bootstrapping MEV board front by running our own large validator node based on MEV board with a large enough stake on Polygon mainnet. So we are already working closely with Matic Ops of validator on Polygon POS chain to make this a reality. And on top of it, we already have 10 million Matic tokens committed to the setup. Once this is done, our RPC will soon be functional uh, for people to submit bundles on. Our testnet is open. We are welcome. We welcome the validators on Polygon to join us and run MEV pool. And we'll explore uh, avenues to analyze and support MEV, MEV extraction on other platforms, BSC, Phantom, et cetera. But that's a long-term goal for us since once we have experience building the same on Polygon. So that's all from my side. That's how it, I would like to conclude my presentation. We at Marlin would love to have you come to our discord and say hi to us um these are the qr codes you can take the snap thank you all right thank you very much um as i said earlier we'll take questions at the end so thank you for your presentation that was that was dope.